The Colorado River built the Grand Canyon, a canyon with steep sides, in Arizona, in the United States. The Grand Canyon measures 277 miles, 446 kilometers, in length, 18 miles, 29 kilometers, in width, and reaches a depth of more than a mile, 6,093 feet or 1,857 meters. The Grand Canyon Parachute National Monument, the Kaibab National Forest, the Hualapai Indian Reservation, the Havasupai Indian Reservation, and the Navajo Nation all encompass the canyon and its surrounding rim. President Theodore Roosevelt frequently traveled to the Grand Canyon region for hunting and sightseeing and was a strong supporter of its preservation. The Colorado River and its tributaries cut their pathways through layer after layer of rock as the Colorado Plateau was raised, exposing nearly two billion years of Earth's geological history. Geologists disagree on several parts of the canyon's history, but several recent studies lend credence to the idea that the Colorado River first cut a path through the region between five and six million years ago. Since then, the Colorado River has caused the tributaries to be downcut and the cliffs to retreat, simultaneously deepening and enlarging the canyon. One of the six main physiographic divisions of the Colorado Plateau province, the Grand Canyon is a river valley in the Colorado Plateau that exposes elevated Proterozoic and Paleozoic strata. Although the Grand Canyon is not the deepest canyon in the world, the deeper canyon is the Kaligandaki Gorge in Nepal. It is renowned for its enormous size and its intricate and vibrant environment. Its thick succession of old rocks, which are well preserved and exposed in the canyon walls, makes it notable from a geological perspective. A large portion of the early geologic history of the continent of North America is preserved in these rock layers. These sediments were then lifted thousands of feet upward by mountain building, forming the Colorado Plateau. The Colorado River drainage area has received more precipitation as a result of the higher elevation, but not enough to modify the Grand Canyon region's semi-arid climate. The Kaibab Plateau, which the Grand Canyon cuts through, is nearly 1,000 feet or 300 meters higher at the North Rim than at the South Rim due to the uneven uplift of the Colorado Plateau. While majority of the runoff on the plateau behind the south rim drains away from the canyon, almost all runoff from the north rim, which also receives more rain and snow, flows toward the Grand Canyon, following the general tilt. As a result, the north side has tributary washes and canyons that are longer and deeper, whereas the south side has side canyons that are narrower and steeper. Because of the higher elevation, temperatures on the North Rim are often cooler than those on the South Rim, averaging 8,000 feet or 2,400 meters above sea level. In the summer, both rims frequently experience heavy downpours. Due to road closures throughout the winter, access to the North Rim via the main route into the canyon, State Route 67, is restricted. The Colorado River Basin, which has grown during the previous 70 million years, includes the Grand Canyon. Over the course of more than 150 years, researchers have gathered information, put forth fresh concepts, and engaged in heated discussions on various theories regarding the geologic genesis of the Grand Canyon and the Colorado River. The history of how the Grand Canyon and Colorado River were formed may be complicated, including the interaction of numerous geologic processes and causes over a long period of time and in various places. The Grand Canyon supergroup was then formed by intermittent sediments between 1.25 billion and 730 million years ago. As the seashore continually advanced and receded over the edge of a proto-North America, many of the formations were deposited in warm shallow seas, near shore habitats, such as beaches and swamps. The Permian Coconino Sandstone is a notable exception since it has a lot of geological evidence of Aeolian sand dune deposition. Additionally, a number of Supai group components were deposited in non-marine settings. The Colorado Plateau was raised 5 to 10,000 feet or 1,500 to 3,000 meters starting around 65 million years ago, which is what causes the Grand Canyon's tremendous depth and particularly the height of its layers, the majority of which originated below sea level during the Laramide orogeny. 
The Colorado River and its tributary stream gradient has been made steeper by this uplift, which has boosted their speed and improved their capacity to cut through rock. The Colorado River drainage system now contains more water than it did during the ice ages due to weather conditions. The historic Colorado River responded by enlarging and deepening its channel. Elevation affects the Grand Canyon's weather in many ways. Although the temperatures near the Colorado River in the Inner Gorge are similar to those in Tucson and other low-elevation desert regions of Arizona, the forested rims are high enough to receive winter snowfall. The Inner Gorge frequently experiences summer highs above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Celsius, whereas the canyon rims occasionally experience winter lows below 0 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 degrees Celsius. The possibility for harsh weather often catches visitors off guard, and this, combined with the canyon's high altitude cliffs, can result in unpleasant side effects like dehydration, sunburn, and hypothermia. Due to the risks associated with exposure to extreme temperatures, winter storms, and late summer monsoons, tourists should receive reliable weather forecasts before trekking or exploring canyons. Although the Park Service provides weather data at gates and visitor centers, this is simply a general estimate and should not be used to plan a trip. Hikers should check the National Weather Service's NOAA Weather Radio or the official National Weather Service website for the most up-to-date weather information in the canyon. The Grand Canyon region had some of the cleanest air in the country as of 1999. However, air pollution from coal-fired power plants, mining, oil and gas, cars, as well as urban and industrial pollutants from neighboring states, California and Mexico, can have an impact on the quality of the air in the region. In the southwest, occurrences like dust storms and forest fires can have a significant influence. The highest visibility is typically during the winter and the worst visibility is typically during the summer. Northwesterly, less populous areas typically have clean, crisp air that winter cold fronts prefer to bring. However, they may also carry smog from adjacent power plants and mines. In the winter, visibility is typically 160 miles, but under optimum circumstances, it may be as high as 210 miles. When pollution from large industrial and urban centers is carried by the southwest's dominant winds throughout the summer, visibility is typically only 100 miles. Smog can be contained within the canyon itself. Along the south rim, there are a number of historic structures, the most of which are close to Grand Canyon Village. One of Mary Coulter's most well-known creations, the Desert View Watchtower, was constructed in 1932. The tower is 27 miles, 43 kilometers, from Grand Canyon Village and is located at the very easternmost point of the South Rim. It is 70 feet, 21 meters, tall. The highest point on the South Rim is the tower's peak, which rises 7,522 feet, 2,293 meters, above sea level. It provides one of the rare complete views of the Colorado River and the canyon's floor. Although it has four floors and is far taller than historical watchtowers, it was intended to resemble those built by ancestral Puebloans. Exclusively 10% of the park's flora is alien out of the 1,737 identified species of vascular plants, 12 of which are indigenous to Grand Canyon National Park and are only found there. The western portions of the canyon are influenced by the Mojave Desert, the eastern portions are covered with Sonoran Desert vegetation, and both rims are covered in Ponderosa and Pinyon Pine forests. Alright thanks for watching and see you in the next video.